Introducing the Anzu Robotics Raptor. Hey folks, Dre here, Recovery One Drones. Uh, usually I do my monthly uh, podcast at the end of the month, which I'll still be doing on the 28th. So I'd like to invite everyone out to join me on that. We'll be discussing uh, some topics that are disturbing in the drone community, but I think we can work things out as an overall community itself. Uh, but today I'm coming to you with some very exciting and great news, especially on the commercial front of the drone industry, and that we have a new player uh, coming on board uh, by the name of Anzul Robotics. And uh, there had been whispers about this, but we wouldn't get, didn't get any details of who was behind it, what was behind it, and so forth. So I'm able to come to you today and give you some information about this drone itself. So I'm going to share the screen right here so you can get a look at it. I'm not real happy uh, of the looks of it, but, you know, you can't get everything you want in life, so you'll take it. And I'm just saying that, uh, you know, this is what we said we get kind of spoiled with some of the products we've gotten over the years. And, uh, you know, it looks real familiar to you if you own a Mavic 3 series drone. It should look real familiar to you. Uh, like myself, I own a Maverick 3 multi-spectrum drone, and uh, the body and everything else is identical. The uh, payload itself, the camera, uh, that's why I say you get kind of spoiled with that green color on it right there. Eh, makes it look kind of cheapest, but you never know until you get your hands on it. But to give you a little background <clears throat> on this drone itself, that the uh, one-time CEO of Autel, uh, I'm trying to find his name here, uh, Randall Warnes, uh, some of you may remember him. He spent a very short uh, time period with Autel and trying to get their customer service back online, which uh, we, I guess ended up being his downfall at Autel and his quick, quick departure from Autel <laughs> for the most point. But I would say that's their loss because now he was joined up with Aloft Technologies, which is going to be on the back end of the technology on this drone as far as keeping your data here in the United States. Uh, manufacturing process is going to be between Malaysia and I think they have a headquarters in Texas, an operations center there also. They're talking about having top level uh customer service, which would be one of the biggest things as end users we look for is what type of customer uh, support are we going to have? A lot of people come out with drones and then we're left hanging in the breach with no support when something goes awry. So that back-end support is going to be real critical for those those end, end users like myself and, and you guys out there. Uh I give you the specs on this, and I'm going to show them to you right quick, and then you're going to see how familiar this drone is to those of us who I own a uh, drone uh, from DJI. And I guess there is an agreement in place between Anzul Robotics and DJI on the technology. As you see here, they're, they're releasing two versions. They're releasing the what we call the basic Raptor, which would be the Mavic 3E, uh, in, in DJI model names, and it's going to give you the high resolution visual uh, inspection capabilities with a four thirds inch uh, 20 megapixel camera with a half inch 12 megapixel CMOS camera, which is going to be the zoom lens on it. It will have a hybrid zoom up to 56x, which is the same numbers you get on the uh, Mavic 3E. Flight time of 45 minutes and a nine mile range, pretty much identical. It does come available with RTK, which is something that is big for people like me because everything I fly now, I fly RTK. No matter how big or how small the project is, I'm using RTK on that project. The next version they have is the Raptor T, which will be the, uh, M the Maverick 3T. And I say the numbers are identical. The big numbers that stick out to me is with the thermal, 640, 640 times 512, which is at right now is at industry standards. That is that is the, the standards that everybody else is using. 
If you're anything below that, you're not getting the quality of what DGI is putting out. You're not getting the quality of what Autel has already put out and some of the other drones that are out there. <clears throat> so if you're not getting 640 by 512 high, re high resolution thermal in in imaging, you're suffering. Now, it does not say what the, is there any optical zoom with the thermal? Because there is on a DJI camera. You can get a little bit of optical zoom on that. And uh, I know even using the M30, T M30 series, you get the optical zoom in the thermal ranges also. Here you go on, you're going to get the same 56 hybrid zoom. Like I said, I know that's for the standard camera. But I don't know if it's going to be for the thermal camera. It won't be 56 because I think my thermal only goes to about uh, 810 on my, my M30T. And on my uh, Mavic Enterprise Advance, I think I only get maybe a four, maybe six times optical zoom. I think it's op maybe digital zoom on the thermal on that one. I have to recheck that. But once again, it will come with a, a RTK module available. Now, the big question everybody's going to ask, well, what's going to be the cost? Now, the cost compared to the DJI versions, it's a little bit more. Uh, and it might be because they're putting in the RTK module in the price. Uh, the base price for the Raptor uh, standard model is right around five grand. And I believe for the Raptor T is going to be somewhere around seven. Now, that's not extremely high. Uh, the original uh uh, Mavic Enterprise Advance was around uh, 65, 7 grand uh, with the thermal camera. So that's not, uh, you know, trying to stick it, stick it to us, but they're going back to what the level, what the uh, Mavic Enterprise Advance went for uh, three, three years ago, three, four years ago. So uh, the numbers are not totally out of the ballpark compared to other U.S. manufacturers uh, are trying to charge you with less capabilities. So they are definitely in the ballpark of what the cost factor is, what we're used to paying for these uh, levels of capabilities. So I can't argue with that at all. So uh, like I say, they try to compare it. I didn't like the comparison chart uh, they had here you know, on this, this information online. They compared to the, the Phantom 4 Pro V2, which is no comparison. Uh, Auto Robotics Evil 2, it doesn't say what version it is because uh, they put out a couple of new versions. So, and they put against the Scadio, which Scadio was never uh, accepted, uh, I would say, drone for industrial purposes. It's a, it's a unique drone with its uh, uh, sensors on it, avoided sensors. But because of the limitations of, of the payload, the camera, uh, the Scadio 2 was never taken seriously, in my opinion, in the industrial. Uh, areas so i'm not going to keep you long this is just trade get some information and this is why you know, people ask me you know why am i going to the uh, auvis uh, expo uh, next week in san diego this is why i'm going not that i knew this was going to be released but I, people have asked me uh, because of the pending or suspected or this the whatever's going on at the federal level, as far as DJI or any Chinese manufactured drone, people like me on the on the on the end user end, I have to keep my ear to the ground, try to figure out what's going on. Because if I need to retool, I need to know what options I have to look at, or I have to get out of this this industry altogether if I if I can't afford to retool. Uh, for me personally, uh, this would be something I can manage. Uh, bring it on board if something did happen to the availability of using DGI products. Uh, it would, it, it, like I say, it, it would be a cost that I would not have want to incur, don't look forward to incurring. But uh, once again, it's not so much price, uh, re, I would say, restricted, restrictive for the most part. So I think this is a great alternative to what is out there. It is a great alternative compared to what other U.S. manufacturers are putting out there. And I'm just talking on the capability side and price-wise. Because you try to find a, a drone with these specs from a U.S. manufacturer out there, you're going to look, you're looking at somewhere in a north of 15 to 20 grand easily. So price-wise, this is a win-win uh, for 
U.S. manufacturers, or should say, at least fronted as U.S. manufacturer, uh, and for end users. This is a win-win scenario. And also, the controller looks identical to the RC Pro. So the software is going to be the only thing that may be somewhat different. And I have to wait to see. And hopefully, when I go to San Diego next week, I will be able to, somebody may have one there. Uh, hopefully, this company will be there uh, doing a demo, and I'll get to see it firsthand, and I will bring that information to you next week. So this is Dre Recover One Drones. Uh, like I always say, hang on, enjoy the ride. Please subscribe to the channel. It helps get this information out there. If you see this, you have friends in the industry, share this with them. So everybody gets to know we need to be informed so we can make informed decisions. Talk to you later. Bye.